What's going on everyone? Mike O back with an SGC submission reveal. This was part of my most recent group submission that came back. This is just my portion of it. Around 120 cards or so, maybe 115. I don't remember the exact number, but I did the reveal of everyone else's cards and then I figured I'd just show mine off separate. So they're all for me. A uh, collection of different stuff, some stuff for the PC, some stuff I've had for a while, some stuff that was freshly, you know, broken, just uh, had a collection of stuff, mostly modern, some vintage, but the vintage is definitely beat stuff, so let's uh, just get into it, and I'll kind of show off some of the stuff I got. So, first up, 2019 Tops X Vlad Jr. set, Bobby Abreu Home Run Derby Legend Autograph. Got a few of these, broke a pretty good amount of this product, and uh, this one looked good, received a 10 on the card and a 10 on the auto, and it's just one that's straight up for the PC, and I thought it would look cool slabbed. Uh, Abreu, really good career with the Phils, uh, really good major league career. He's one of those guys who, uh, you know, put up some pretty impressive numbers over the course of his career. Probably a little short. Hall of Fame wise, but uh, did some stuff that not many big leaguers did, and uh, this home run derby was uh, pretty amazing. This was really the first real breakout home run derby where someone put up crazy numbers. A lot of guys have done that since, but as a Phillies fan, you know, that was quite the surprise. Uh, a great hitter, but you know, someone who would hit like 25 home runs per season, you know, he'd do well during bat in practice, but you didn't really expect that uh, crazy home run derby, so he was able to win that, and that was a fun memory, watching with some family, always watch the home run derby and all-star game with family, generally speaking, as it is uh, usually, what, mid-July, it's around my dad's birthday, so usually people around, I remember as a kid being down the shore a few times, Jersey Shore, they're on home run derby, so great stuff. Here's another one of that card as well. This is the base, non-autograph version, one of one. So it's the gold one of one. Thought that would be a cool one to have slabbed. It looked really good. As long as I thought it would be a nine or a plus, I probably would have just gotten it slabbed just to get it slabbed. You know, it's an Abreu one for one, and it's not exactly the most popular sets. So the value is what it is. Um... I suppose someone would potentially overpay for such a card, but it's not something I would be looking to sell anyway. I just thought it would be cool to have cased up. So definitely cool to have that. 10, shout out to Amish Dave Archer, longtime YouTuber and fellow Bobby Abreu collector. So I'm sure he'd appreciate those cards. Here's another one. It's the red parallel. Red's pretty basic. I think it's like one per set or one per pack or however they were dispersed. But got nine and a half. So a little semi Abreu rainbow there. This is a Bryce Harper white. That one is numbered three of ten. That's one of the parallels. Received a nine and a half. And by the way, a little fun fact, I actually have the Harper Gold base as well, uh, one of one. That one I sent into PSA, and that came back a 10. So I have the Harper and the Abreu, both Phillies in that set. So definitely lucked out with that. So Fernando Tatis Red received a 9. These cards overall are pretty clean, so I didn't really look to see what the issue was. Most likely some slight surface issue, I would assume. Got a bunch of these top sexes done. There's a red parallel. Chris Paddock. Just kind of had a bunch of them. I have so many of them that I looked at such a small percentage of them. Here's a 10 on the judge. And figured, you know what? Let me send some in in this order. Kevin Biggio, 9.5. I'm sure I'll move some and keep some. 9.5 on the Pete Alonzo red. It's a Chris Paddock autograph, number three of ten, nine and a half and ten auto grid. Got a nine on the Eloy. Ten 
10 on the Fernando Tatis red parallel. Another Tatis red in a 10. Tatis red, nine and a half, mint plus. Got a 10 gem on the Tatis, numbered the 10, numbered four of 10, black and white parallel. It's another Harper at a nine and a half. Send in a couple Harper base. Was hoping to get a 10 on one of them. Looks like mint pluses though, which is still fine. Very often when I'm sending the SGC, I look at stuff and I just kind of go, you know what, if that has a strong chance at a nine and a half, that's good enough. It's a nine and a half on the Griffey, but these cards, like most, look very nice in the Tux, 10 gem mint. Have a lot of fun with SGC. I think the process is pretty easy. Sure, the wait is currently a little longer than I would like, but it ain't getting any better anywhere else. Unless you use a very unpopular third-party grader, you're not getting your cards back super soon. 10 gem mint. PSA right now is like 9 to 10 weeks just to get your cards logged, and then you have the wait after that. And... I don't really follow BGS, but I know they are quite behind as well. Here's a 10 gem mint on the Vlad Jr. So hopefully things will pick up. Here is the only gold label pristine. It's a 2019 Tops X Pete Alonzo Friends and Favorites Red Parallel. Pete Alonzo Gold. So pristine. So that's nice. Nice to get a pristine. Just a little bonus. I don't really seek them out when I'm sending them out, but cool to get when you do. Here's an Alonzo rookie campaign. It's just a base card. Hopefully some different stuff coming up here. All right, 2018 Topps Heritage. Ronald Acuna Jr., 9.5. This is one that I knew looked good. There was definitely a little something off with it. I forget exactly offhand. This card looks awesome in the tux, by the way. It's one of those cards that I think I was looking at, and I was like, you know what? If it goes to PSA, they'll more than likely give it a 9. The way they're going right now, they'd absolutely give it a 9. And it, it could have gotten a 10 gem, but was not uh, any kind of definite. And in my mind, I think I thought, you know what? It's at least a 9.5. Let me go SGC. I had a bunch of these Jack Flaherty's. He was kind of a hot commodity at one point. Had a really great 2019 season. 2020, not as good. Struggled a little bit. Shortened season, so you can only, you know, read so much into it. But I'm pretty certain his hobbies uh, dried up a little bit, at least in the short term. But I have a number of these finest that will be shown off. So that's a 10. And Top's Finest, awesome cards. Great looking rookie cards. Certainly not the most popular in the hobby. They don't really get the attention maybe they deserve. But they're cool. So I'm sure I'll do okay with some of the extras. Definitely will be keeping one for the PC. It's a Trout in a 10. I think I actually have some of these off at PSA as well. I might have sent some to them. Here's a Reslab. 2018 Topps Chrome Sapphire Max Freed rookie card. Sapphire, unbelievably popular set. 2018 specifically. Because you have the Acuna and so many other rookies that are highly sought after. But Freed, kind of flying under the radar, definitely had this in just my extras from Sapphire for a while. And, uh, you know, what it aside at one point, said I wanted to look at it. Looked really good, sent it in, got a 10, and then it came back mislabeled. The only time I've ever gotten a mislabel from SGC, they fixed it for me here. So happy about that. Some more Jack Flaherty's coming up. So another finest, and another finest. A couple more trouts. This one received a nine, and we've got a ten. I think we're gonna have a couple bigger cards coming up. 
in 2018, Bowman Chrome Mega Box, Jesus Lazardo, Gold Refractor, Gem Mint 10, Lazardo, good talented arm out in Oakland. Here's a Victor Robles Refractor from 2018 Tops Chrome, received a 9. And second one received a 10 gem mint. Love the refractors. Got a 2019 Bowman Chrome Vlad Guerrero Jr. rookie gem mint 10. And an Eloy Jimenez Bowman Chrome rookie in a gem mint 10. Some ultra modern stuff. Ultra modern, this might be the way to go. SGC with the price increases at PSA right now. Aaron Judge Refractor, nine and a half mint plus. I mean, especially if you just if you can get over just having one type of slab in your collection, if you like multiples, and I'm totally cool with multiples, I'm very used to it. I think PSA is a good way to go. Save some money. Get some very high quality grading and get some great looking slabs. Here's a nine mint on the Acuna from Tops Living. And I'm not a registry guy, so that plays really zero factor for me. All right, here's some vintage low grade stuff. Some stuff I picked up at an auction cheap, and you know, I knew this was pretty beat, the Red Heart. But to me, if I decided not to keep it, I'd rather have this type of stuff. I'd rather have that assigned number, uh, even though this wouldn't go for much. But at least someone would know what they're getting. Plus, honestly, it just looks great. I mean, if you look real close, look, there's creases and such. You hold it back a little bit. I mean, that's just a big, bright card with the black border around it. I mean, it's great looking. Honestly... I'm getting more and more to the realization that specifically with vintage, pre-war, that stuff, condition, super overrated. Now, I'm not saying you don't want a card that looks great that's in good condition. I don't want cards that are ripped up and shredded and you can't see the front. Of course not. But, I mean, you can get twos, threes, and fours that present very, very well. And to me, you know what? That's what cards that are 50, 60, 75 years are supposed to look like. Do I like good condition cards? Of course. Am I willing to pay $2,000 as opposed to like $50? No, not at all. Here's a 1941 Playball Frank Hayes Philadelphia Athletics card. Received a three. And a two on the Wally Moses from 1941 Playball. Another Philadelphia Athletic. Love the old school Playballs. Here's a basketball card. I do not get these slabbed up too often. Hell, I don't buy basketball virtually ever. But it's a 2018-19 Donruss Optic Luka Doncic Blue Velocity Prism. Received a Mint 9. I got this because I found some packs of Optic. Because you used to be able to find stuff like that. And... Uh, there was a contest for Ricky Russo's channel that I was uh, nominated for, and it was a team effort, so I certainly wanted to participate. I broke this pack and, well, did very well for that. So I know this card's, obviously his stuff is uh, pretty popular. I know you hear some people talking about how basketball's come down a little bit following the season. Of course the hype can't last at that max capacity forever, but still a good card. I remember looking at it back when I pulled it, thought about sending in the PSA, and at the time I just, I thought it was probably a 9, and I kept looking for reasons why it might be a 10, and maybe I should have sent it in at the time, maybe if they were a little more lenient on the right day, it would have gotten a 10, but to me, in my heart, it was a 9, sent it in to SGC, thought perhaps, perhaps it could get a 9.5, but it did get a 9, really slight surface scratch that you can't see unless you really, really look hard for it. But cool card. I'll keep it for now. I'm not completely uh, hell-bent on keeping it forever, but I'm not in a hurry to move it either because um, it's got a little story to it. Here's a good one. 2018 Bowman Chrome Megabox. Luis Robert. 
Purple Refractor, numbered to 250, received a 9.5 mint plus. This was sitting in an investment box for a long time, and not investment in the way that you see investment channels all the time. I just have a box that I labeled investment, um, and that just referred to the fact that, hey, these are cards that, you know, I don't know what to do with right now. I don't, you know, it's mostly prospects or rookies that I'm not necessarily going out of my way to collect at this time. But I'm also not willing to give away because you don't know the extent to what these guys could potentially do. And uh, definitely a good thing to uh, hold on to this one. Robert, when this set came out, was definitely highly uh, talked about and highly thought about. But the base card was a couple bucks and I'm, cer I'm certain a card like this was probably, you know, 10 to 30 bucks, something like that. And now certainly much more so got a nine and a half on that and another card that i had in that box and believe it or not I actually have two of these i think i got a nine and a half on the last one this one i got a 10 on 2018 bowman chrome mega box luis robert gold refractor numbered 50 of 50 received an sgc gem mint 10 so awesome looking card rookie with tons of ability Certainly received a ton of hype around baseball and around the hobby. Limited 60-game season, so you only got to do so much. Definitely didn't excel at the end of the year, but certainly showed a lot of promise. And this is uh, a heck of a card to get in a very good grade and looks, uh, looks pretty sweet. So definitely happy to have that. And a card that's been on the rise and been a little harder to find, and I really regret uh, not picking up a higher graded version of this. Back early in the year, it's a 1964 Tops, Richie Allen. Five and a half, excellent plus. I bought a bunch of these raw, but they're all cards that were going to grade between fours and sixes. I actually still have a couple out with the PSA. I might even have a few more out with SGC. Card looks awesome in this holder. But I had a few opportunities to buy PSA 7s and 8s, and I didn't do it. And there was one that I was going to buy, an 8, uh, for about $120, something like that. I think I could have gotten it for like 110 at the one card show. And I thought, you know what, I'll grab it at the Philly show. It's coming up soon. Dealer wasn't going anywhere. And then I told uh, Ray from Philly about it. He grabbed it. If he declined it, I would have bought it. But I let him grab it, and that card has shot up to about $450 as people started to realize that Richie Allen has a legitimate chance to get in the Hall of Fame whenever the Veterans Committee decides to actually get together since they postponed it this year for whatever reason. I mean, the reasoning was the ongoing pandemic, but you're telling me you couldn't have had a vote over Zoom? You don't have someone that could have, you know, set that up? Oh, well. We'll see what happens in the future. All right, here's a card. A lot of people will be rolling their eyes at this. I have two of them. 1987 Topps Tiffany, Terry Mulholland, 8.5, near mint plus. So Terry Mulholland, one of my favorite athletes of all time, one of my favorite baseball players. He came up with the Giants, was traded to the Philadelphia Phillies in a five- or six-player deal, came over with Charlie Hayes. And uh, a few others, maybe Dennis Cook, I forget. I believe they were all part of the Steve Pedrosian trade. Anyway, he threw a no-hitter against the Giants with the Phillies on August 15th, 1990. I was in attendance. He was a left-handed pitcher. I wanted. I always tried to uh, pull off his pickoff move, the first one of the greatest pickoff moves there's been. Had a really strong career, started the All-Star Game in 93, part of the 93 National League Champions. Simply one of my favorites, so figured, what the hell, is Topps Tiffany, why not try and get one slabbed? Had hoped for a 9, got an 8.5 on that one, and sent a second one, really the two best copies I had, and this one also received an 8.5. Be cool to have a 10, I mean, but not too many people are getting his stuff slabbed. Obviously, it's the type of card that's probably like a quarter card so i'm sure there's other people who would have interest in such a card should i make one available but the secondary market is you know not exactly popping for terry mulholland but it's all about who you like and what you like to collect 
2018 Tops Update, Glaber Torres, 83 Tops Design, received a 9. Got a Rafael Devers, 2018 Tops, Gem Mint 10. So a nice grade there for Devers. Still a ton of ability, still super young. Here's a cool card, I like this. I love the uh, Tops Heritage Action Variation cards. This one has that sweet rookie cup there. 10 Gem Mint, Aaron Judge. Performed pretty well in the postseason. After a really hot start to the 2020 year and then some injuries that slowed him down. Here's a Lou Bob Bowman Chrome Mega Box. Received a Mint 9. So, good, nice mint card, but not quite gem mint. 2018 Bowman Chrome Ronald Acuna Jr. Bowman Trending. 10 gem mint. Acuna Bowman Chrome Prospects, Mint 9. Shohei Otani, 2018 Bowman, 9.5, Mint Plus. I think these Bowmans were all ones I thought were probably 9.5, Mint Pluses. Could go either way, 9 or 10. Ozzy Albies, 9.5. Devers in a 9. Mike Trout in a nine and a half. I mean, definitely looks uh, looks good. Nine and a half mint plus Juan Soto camo. Ten gem mint on the Spencer Howard. He finally made his debut this year. Not overly impressive, but you know, only a limited opportunity to pitch. So we'll see. How he performs in 2021. 2019 Tops Heritage, Keston Yera, 10 Gem Mint. He had super hype during the spring training and the layoff. And then, again, just one of those guys, he was okay in 2020. His average was kind of low and not able to get it going. You know, lost out in the opportunity for another 100 games, and his hobby has dropped off a bit. 2019 Tops Heritage, Fernando Tatis Jr., 9.5 Mint Plus. Eloy Jimenez, 2019 Tops Heritage, 9.5 Mint Plus. 10 Gem Mint on a Pete Alonso, 2019 Tops Heritage. Another Keston in a nine. Twenty nineteen Tops Heritage Brendan Rogers action variation received a nine mint. This is one that I kind of just forced in. I just kind of had it, and I think I probably knew better. Probably said, "Hey, I could get a nine and a half." Not that Brendan Rogers is excessively popular or collectible right now, but still, a guy who you know. Has that ability to uh, catch fire at some point. 2019 Tops Chrome Sapphire, Yon Mankata, 9.5, Mint Plus. Nice card. Like the Sapphire. 2019 Bowman's Best, Fernando Tatis Jr. Rookie card, 9.5, Mint Plus. His stuff was crazy on fire for a while. I'm sure it'll hype up quite a bit spring training. I believe his stuff is come down to earth a little bit I mean stuff's still super high but I don't know I mean unless you desperately need the money I don't know if I'd be in a super big hurry to sell his stuff right now Aaron Judge snapshots black and white gorgeous card nine and a half mint plus and I, by saying that I mean I would feel like it would stay the same or rise a little bit you know as we get to the spring training period of the year where baseball gets hyped up a little bit right now guys are uh, being hyped up that are in the postseason and then you're competing with the nfl 2018 tops living ronald acuna jr rookie gem 10 aaron judge base snapshots nine mint got some more tops x cards a 10 gem on keston Hira. 
Another Keston in a 10 gem mint. And another Keston in a 10 gem mint. I actually still have a bunch of unopened boxes of these Top X sets. Nine and a half mint plus on Tatis. Another nine and a half mint plus on Tatis. And a 10 on a Tatis. All right, should have a whole bunch of these too. I like the dynamic duels. I mean, some of them kind of don't make sense and others are super sweet. This is Mike Yastrzemski and Carl Yastrzemski. Grandfather and grandson, 10 gem mint. Vlad Jr. and Sr., 9 mint. Especially with them being white cards, they just look really nice in the SGC. These are ones, I'm going to keep a few of them. There's like a Soto Griffey and a Trout and I think Trout and Acuna, those and a Phillies one that I'll be keeping for the collection. But a lot of these I'll probably make available during a sale. 10 Jim Min. Acuna and Austin Riley, 9.5 Min Plus. Michael Kopech and Eloy Jimenez, 10 Jim Min. Like the city skylines in the background. Bernie Williams and Tori Hunter, 10 Jim Min. These are pretty pricey when you get them from Tops too. These are from 2019. I did not get the 2020 version. I bought a few singles, but these are like 150 bucks. You get the set and you get a couple parallels and you get an autograph, one dual autograph. And you can hit it big with the autographs or you can kind of get it rough. And, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty pricey. But here's a nine mint DeGrom and Scherzer. 10 gem mint, DeGrom and Scherzer, so had two of them. Freddie Freeman and Austin Riley, two heroes from NLCS Game 1 in a gem 10. Soto and Griffey, 10 gem mint, definitely keeping that one in the collection. Kyle Tucker and Jose Altuve, 10 gem mint. Kyle Tucker had a really nice season. It seems that the Astros' uh, stigma has affected him a little bit, which it really shouldn't, but it has, in my opinion at least. Mike Mussina and Edgar Martinez, 10 gem mint, a pair of Hall of Famers. A couple Brewers, Christian Yelich and Keston Hiera, 9.5 mint plus. The 9.5. Mint Plus, Mike Trout, and Ronald Acuna Jr. Cool card there. This is one I definitely would like to have had a 10 for the collection or a 9.5. Reese Hoskins, Andrew McCutcheon, probably the only person on earth that would get this card graded. But just a neat card. Two guys who've made some contributions to the Phillies, this era of Phillies baseball, like the skyline in the background. But got a nine on that. Not that, you know, if you put that at auction, you probably get a buck for it. Um, and if you had a gem mint 10, it might go for three bucks. I mean, you know, 10 gem mint, Gary Sanchez and CC Sabathia. Cool card. And a 10 gem mint, Clayton Kershaw, Will Smith. So, cool card there. Let's see what else we got. Another finest, Jack Flaherty, 10 gem mint. I think I got a 10 on every Flaherty I sent in, and I sent in quite a bit. I think this is the last one. 10 gem. Austin Hayes, he was receiving some hype after uh, playing pretty well late 2019. But hype's calmed down on him. Here's a refractor and a 10 gem mint. Raphael Devers Refractor, 9.5 Mint Plus. Shohei Otani, 9.5 from Finest. And another Otani from Finest, 
Here's a super sweet one for the Bryce Harper slash Phillies PC. 2019 Bowman's Best, Bryce Harper, Blue Refractor, number to 150, 10 Jim Mint. Love the blue. I like to go by team colors. I mean, obviously, I'll take all the different parallels, but the blue and the red both look great for the fills. Gold pretty much looks good for all teams, but then you have colors like purple and green, which are kind of silly. Phillies cards with that are green parallels kind of look like, you know, Christmas cards with the red and green and purple. You know, other than a few select teams like the Rockies, it's just kind of silly looking. 2019, Tops on Demand, Dynamic Duels, Votto Freeman, Nine Mint. That's a pretty tough insert. Here's a 10 Gem Mint. Tatis and Ozzy Smith. So it's a cool one. Another Tatis. 2018 Bowman Prospects Camo Parallel. 9.5 Mint Plus. And a second one that came back as a Gem Mint 10. Shohei Otani. 2018 Tops Chrome Sepia Refractor. 10 Gem Mint. Send in an Akuna. Prism Refractor, kind of hoping for that 9.5. Another one of those cards, I was pretty convinced it wouldn't get a 10. You know, you never know, but this one did get a 9. Still, obviously a highly desirable card, with Akuna being very collectible. 10 Gem Mint Shohei. Shohei needs to get his stuff together next year. He needs to uh, kind of play injury-free and get his offense kind of going. A lot of high expectations for him coming into this year and kind of struggled. I think the injury and the lack of success at pitching really hurt his confidence overall. And he had some power, but his average was really, pretty terrible. There's another 10 gem mint. Some vintage. So this is just some stuff I kind of had sitting around. And there are extras that I have no problem keeping and I have no problem selling. Didn't really decide what to do with it yet. But here's a four and a half on Richie Ashburn from 58 tops. Pretty clean card overall. The top has got that crazy kind of streaking in the coloring. But otherwise, pretty nice. 1957 tops, Robin Roberts in a four. These are all duplicates I have. Pretty sure all these slabbed already as either PSA or SGC. And then I have raw copies in my uh, Phillies team set binder. So... It's a four and a half on a 72 top Steve Carlton. And to me, it's all about, you know, how the card presents. Three and a half on the 56 Robin Roberts. I mean, three and a half is not any kind of special grade. And there's certainly a little bit of snowing here and there. And, you know, the edges and corners are far from perfect. A little bit of staining on the back. But to me, for a card... Of that age still presents well looks great again black tux helps so so i'm talking about just me everyone's different but i think super super high quality vintage is you know if you have more money than you know what to do with by all means go for it but if you're a simple collector i mean just grab something that looks sweet Save yourself the money. The lower grades still look amazing. 65 tops, Jim Bunning, 4 VG to X. You can say that about modern too. I'm a little more particular with modern, and I like to get my 10s or 9.5s. I could deal with 9s, but some Jim Mint prices are just crazy. I'll see stuff like at certain Patrick Mahomes, it'll be like 400 for a 9, 3,000 for a 10. I'm like, come on. That's a little extreme. Here's a 4. 56 Richie Ashburn again not a perfect card but nice enough it's a 54 tops Richie Ashburn and a 4 and the final card is one I honestly kind of don't know why I sent this in 59 tops Ace Hurlers Pierce and Robin Roberts one and a half, super off center. This type of card probably better off sending in to PSA. They're way more lenient, in my opinion, on 
centering. Plus, you could always get the whole, like, it's a 4OC or whatever they would give it. But centering is one thing that does bother me with vintage. I'd rather have a card that was perfect out of the pack or near perfect, that was well loved and well collected, than a card that was just miscut right out of the factory. But not too bad. Overall, fun submission. Some stuff that was kind of repetitive, but a lot of stuff for the PC and some extra stuff. So comment below. Let me know what you guys think. As always, I have a blast with SGC. Look forward to my next order. Thinking, you know, three weeks, maybe a month, maybe a little more, but should have a few more orders coming in. So I look forward to that. And I have some stuff at PSA that, you know, hopefully comes back at some point too. And then I'll have more reveals, but stay tuned for mail days, some breaks, some collection updates and showcases. Appreciate you guys watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Have a great one.